Hi, I'm David Radcliffe. I'm a member of the Committee for Writers with Disabilities at the Writers Guild of America West. I am a skinny white guy wearing a blue Argyle shirt and headphones, and I'm seated on a white couch. We're very proud to bring you the Film Independent Presents a Disability Inclusion Showcase, marking the premiere of the 2020 Media Access Awards presented by Easter Seals. We send our thanks to the Media Access Awards and to Easter Seals for making this showcase possible. And thank you to the Hollywood Foreign Press Association, which is the lead sponsor of Film Independent Presents. We send additional enthusiastic thanks to our screening partner, Vision Media. I'm here for a conversation with Danny Gomez, an actor who played a significant role in the New Amsterdam episode called Lift Off, and who was recently honored at the Media Access Awards as a recipient of the Christopher Reeve Acting Scholarship. And now I'll let Danny describe himself for our audience. Danny? Hi, my name is Danny J. Gomez. I am a Latino, Colombian-born American. I am have side-swept hair. Uh, I'm wearing a blue jacket with a white undershirt, and I'm sitting in my room with a TV and shelf with a bunch of stuff on it behind me. And to my right is my, my backdrop where I do all my self-tapes. And I'm so happy to be part of this conversation, and uh, I'm happy for everybody watching. Thank you so much for joining us. Great, thanks. Uh, Danny, so first off, congratulations to you for, for receiving the Christopher Reeve Scholarship. Obviously, that's a, a pretty big deal. Christopher Reeve was a, a, a monumental figure, not only in the disability space, but also in film and television. So what does this mean to you to get a recognition like this? I, I mean, it's so amazing to get this recognition because one of the first after my accident was the uh, Media Access Awards, and that was in, I think, 2017. I was injured in 2016. So in 2017, I did the short film with Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge, which won Best Film. So we were uh, invited to the Media Access Awards. And while I was there, I, I was just astounded by all the performers with disabilities because I had no clue that there was like this whole world, this pocket of performers with disabilities. And uh, I saw my friend Tatiana Ali being awarded, and uh, I just, you know, I was just in awe about everything that was going on, and I was like, I, I felt at home sitting in that audience and in that crowd, and I felt like not uh, nervous. I felt seen because there was other people that looked like me sitting in the room and getting awarded. So to be awarded this year, it, it I mean, when I got the call from my agent. I, I think I was still in bed, but <laughs> but I woke up. I was like, "What? What are you talking about?" And uh, I mean, I, I I try not to get that crazy, but after I got off the phone, I was like, you know, it just like a wave of emotions and feelings came over me because I, I never thought that would happen. And to be recognized by someone like the Christopher Reeve Foundation, I mean, he was, you know, he he was just uh, he's an icon. And what happened to him, it, you know, it shows people that you could still do whatever you want, even even though he was faced with a, you know, a life-altering injury. So I'm, I'm just so proud to be part of it. Can you tell us a little bit about that uh, award-winning Disability Film Challenge production that you did? Oh my God, it was, so when I, um, when I joined the production, I hadn't acted in probably five plus years. And uh, I didn't realize what a weekend challenge was until I got to set. And I was reading my script and I was in every single scene. I had like 10 pages of dialogue and I was like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> and uh, it's a running joke because in the middle of, of the script, it says that my character sits in the living room naked. And I was like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> you know? But it ended up being, it ended up being really funny and uh, like an awesome experience because I was just thrown into the fire and I, I had to conjure up whatever old acting abilities I, I had and it just you know I was terrified on the inside but I kind of just let it all go and the fact that uh the director told me I could be as over the top as I wanted because it was a comedy that really put me at ease because I have like a little Jim Carrey-esque vibe mm -hmm. inside of me mm -hmm. so that was <laughs> so that really helped but uh after that I was like man I could do this I, I you know I got through this we won best film I got signed to my agency, KMR, and from there, like all these doors started opening up, and it's just been an awesome ride till, till now. 
how did you uh, how did the New Amsterdam opportunity come about? Um, how did that come your way? That was just you know another audition that my agency sent me a self tape. It was one of the first self tapes that I sent out, and oh my god, that day I remember uh, I was living in Van Nuys. And it was a gorgeous day. And if anybody that lives in the valley knows that when it's a gorgeous day, all you hear is planes and helicopters <laughs> flying over. So in every scene, I'm like supposed to be really dramatic and crying and like all this, you know, these emotions. And I'm in the middle of the scene, all you hear is. <laughs> and like it, it took me six hours to do this, this self tape. Oh my God. Wow. By the end, I was like, I was just exhausted. I was like, this is terrible. Like, no, uh, there's no way I'm going to book this. And then, you know, when I was editing the scenes together, my, my character is a pilot. So in one of the scenes, like, you know, there's tears coming down and then I hear the plane flying over in the background. I'm like, no, <laughs> but then I thought about, it, I was like, Oh wait, this I'm flying a plane in my scene. So this kind of yeah. works. Yeah. So I left, I left it. In, yeah. I left it in there. <laughs> I wonder if they saw it and they're like, wow, that was great editing. But I left it in there. And, you know, a week later, they told me I was pinned for the role. And uh, and then a few weeks later, I was off my way, on my way to New York. And it was just like, that was just a life changing experience. It was my first guest star role. And and when I got there, I just, I felt like I was at home. Like I felt like I, I, I belonged there. And I, every, you know, it, it was awesome. I can't. Yeah. I mean, your character is a very central figure in that episode, in, in that whole storyline. It's built around his his sort of um, re, re, coming into his own in that process of using that mechanical device to uh, get back to his former self. How did that relate to you and your own experience post post injury for you? Was that a hard thing to hard emotional space to re to reaccess? Absolutely, I. Uh... Uh, I had a spinal cord injury from a mountain biking accident. So I was paralyzed from the waist down. My character is actually paralyzed from just about like the bottom of the neck to like the chest area down. So I had to first, like, I know, you know, this is the thing about playing someone with a disability is that you have to kind of know what that person goes through. And I know what it it's like to be paralyzed. So for me to just, you know, act like I'm paralyzed from here down was a little easier but um going back on like what i experienced i had to relearn how to sit how to feed myself how to bathe how to put my clothes on and you know even just sitting up you know i had to gain that strength again because i my spine my spine was like so weak that i would just flop over so once i started building all that uh all those tools again just regular life tools then I, I started venturing out into sports and uh, learning how to use my wheelchair. I mean, I was I was deathly afraid to go outside in my wheelchair because I, I'd fallen a few times. Like, you know, my front wheel, would, my caster would hit, hit a rock or something and then I'd tumble out of my chair. And yeah, then people uh, in my situation know that getting back in your chair when you fall is like that's like an advanced move. You know, it's it's really hard. Yeah. And so and I lived in Hollywood at the time, you know, sidewalks aren't too friendly for wheelchairs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah. it took me like a year and a half to gain confidence in just myself and my my wheelchair skills but it was the sports and stuff that really helped me um it was a foundation called triumph they help people with spinal cord injury they had this big sports chairs festival and it was like a weekend long I, and i decided to go for it and i i discovered this whole world of wheelchair sports I played rugby. I uh, there was like WCMX, which is like aggressive skate park wheelchairs, which yeah. I actually fell backwards. <laughs> but uh, all that being said, like I I realized that there was a, more of a world out there for people in wheelchairs, and it really gave me confidence. So coming back to Mateo and and his experience when he finally was able to fly that plane again it was like the world that he remembered. Mm -hmm. So like, it, like for me, it was like the world that I remember playing sports and not for, I know I'm sure for Mateo, he didn't realize that he probably thought he was just going to be stuck, you know, in that paralyzed state forever, not be able to do anything. So when uh, Dr. Kapoor showed him that there was things possible outside of that, 
I think that that reignited the fire inside of him. You know what I mean? Why do you think it is that, that we so rarely? But that's kind of what happened. No, no, that's great. Why do you think it is that we so rarely see that sort of world in TV and film? The the world that you discovered post injury, a world of very active, social, athletic, disabled people. What do you think are the barriers that are keeping the rest of the world from seeing the world that we inhabit? That's such a great question. I was actually speaking to another uh, wheelchair actor friend of mine, and uh, he was he's he's really I mean he's built. He's like a you know weightlifter. He's just we were laughing because he told me I'm not getting any castings because the casting directors tell me I'm too muscular. And and I was like you know what that happens a lot. They say you're too muscular. You don't look disabled enough, right? And he's like exactly. And like, I'll get that too. Like, I don't look disabled enough. Like what, what is disabled enough? And that's, yeah. the past has show like, has shown us what a disabled person is supposed to look like. So now casting, I don't know, producers, showrunners, they have a problem putting someone, who, you know, with a disability because they feel like they have to explain what disability is. Right. So, and they think that, uh, you know, the general public or audience is it going to accept some regular looking dude working in a coffee shop who's also in a wheelchair? Right. They're exactly. like, well, what is, why is he in the wheelchair? <laughs> Do we have to explain his backstory? No, this dude's in a, I mean, it's stuff that you see right. every day. And, and, and also because of the way people in dis with disabilities are portrayed, when I'm out in public, it's like, like a sideshow. I don't want to say the word freak, but you know, like you get stares because people aren't used to seeing people with disabilities out in public. And, and it, it's sad because there's so many of us out there. There's so many people with great stories and abilities that aren't being portrayed on screen. And it's a sad thing. But uh, yeah, I think it's mostly the people making the decisions that, that have to put us forth and, and just show that we're all part of this world. We're all the same. We just, you know, we just do things a little differently. Yeah. What are your feelings about actors without disabilities playing roles of characters with disabilities. I mean, even in the in the responses you've given today, we can see the value of authenticity, someone that really understands the experience of disability and, and as a lived experience, not as a as a trope. So what are your feelings about actors without disabilities who say, I can play anybody I want? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, now that I am a, an actor with a disability, like before my accident, I would have told you, well, you know, that's what actors do, blah, blah, blah. But now, because I've lived it and I see that there's like minuscule amounts of opportunities for actors with disabilities, I'm like, well, why is this able-bodied person or non-disabled person playing this person with a disability when there's so many actors out there who can play this role? So it, I mean, it really gets under my skin because you don't, you can do the research, you can read books, you can talk to people, you can interview, but you'll never know what it's like to wake up and look at a wheelchair and know that you can't just stand up and walk to the bathroom or, yeah. you know, or, or feel helpless sometimes if you fall out of your chair. Like those are emotions that you can't, you can't ever conjure up no matter how much research you've done. Mm -hmm. And like, even for people with, like I get sent out for amputee roles or, you know, uh, somebody who's autistic or somebody that has cerebral palsy. And like, I still kind of, you know, I don't, I feel uncomfortable going out for those roles, but for the disabled community, we don't get a lot of opportunities. So we still go out yeah. for those, Yeah. you know, and I, but I think in the disabled community, we, we kind of all respect each other because we have like, we, we all, we're all a family. Like you see somebody else in a wheelchair, you give like the, Hey, you know, that nod. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, that's what the know, media we, access, that's what the media access awards are. It's a exactly. bunch of us ro rolling around, nodding at each other. <laughs> yes, exactly. You know? Yeah. And like, we all understand each other. It doesn't matter what our disability is. Um, like now I have, I have so many friends with disabilities, different disabilities. And like, it, it really opened my eyes to this beautiful world of people. And it's really enriched my soul. I mean, honestly, it's, like every year that Easter Seals Disability Film Challenge comes around, it's like 
some some of the happiest memories I've had and some of the best people that I've met. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, they, they need to give us those opportunities. I, I mean, I, there was recently a film that I saw that came out. I forget the name of it, but the three main characters in the film were disabled. One was blind, uh, two were in a wheelchair. And when I, you know, I saw the trailer, it looked really funny. And then I looked it up because I like to research the actors and they were all non-disabled, able-bodied actors. Yeah. And I, I, I went out like on a Twitter rampage <laughs> <laughs> to my yeah. like 50 followers at the time. But uh, yeah, yeah and, I, and I started researching and I read articles that the production had a month to cast. And they're like, we didn't have enough time to cast these actors. I'm like, you couldn't find one. Right. And then it started this whole thread and other people in the community started like listing. Oh, I know these actors. This guy could have played him. This guy could have played him. Danny Gomez, Dan J. Gomez could have played this guy. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, in five minutes of a tw tw Twitter thread, we found 20 actors. So don't tell me you didn't have time to fill that, yeah. that role. I mean, I get it. You have limitations on base where you're at, but did you do the work? I, I don't know. In um, Since you're an actor who has been both an, a non-disabled and a disabled actor, um, what have you learned about yourself in that transition? And what have you learned about the industry as a whole now that you've been kind of on both sides of the fence? It's it's funny because I feel like I, I, I was I was in a weird category then before because I'm Latino and usually, you know, we get pigeonholed into certain roles. And then because my Spanish wasn't like perfect, then I was either not Spanish enough or I was too white too um, Americanized. Mm -hmm. So I kind of felt into that little weird gray area because I was going against all these other guys that look exactly like me. So before my, my injury, I was in that room with a bunch of other like uh, Latino men, five, nine, whatever. And some of their Spanish was way better. Mine kind of sucked, I guess, if you will. And yeah, it, it's like, okay, I could do more than that. Like there are Latinos out there that have no accent, that some don't even speak, you know, speak Spanish. Like, why can't you just write around that? Why does it have to be this box that you have to put us into? Yeah. So then I, you know, I, I, I have my injury, I become a disabled actor. And now it's like, oh, well, all you can do is be this depressed. Um, I want to, I want to end my life or I'm super inspirational, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but I can't just be the, the the boyfriend or the the guy working, you know, who's a lawyer. Or, you know, it's it's like they put. I went from one box and then I I got jumbled into another box. Yeah, a so, box inside of a box. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So now I'm the now I'm the Latino who can't really speak Spanish who's in a wheelchair. <laughs> no, how but you, uh, how did you feel about this particular character in New Amsterdam? How did this seem different, or did it feel? different from other things that you've had offered to you. Certainly the scope of visibility is pretty significant because it's a very popular network drama and, and it was a central storyline for that episode. Um, how did that feel to have that opportunity? I mean, just the fact that they, they wrote that specific character with a disability and they, they reached out, casting reached out to see actors with disabilities. I, I, and I know that show like they have a track record, record of casting authentically. First of all, that that really attracted me to the project. And you know, I'm still, I'm still looking, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to break into the industry, if you will. So I mean, that was that was a huge opportunity. I didn't think that I was gonna book it from my, my audition self tape story. But um, just like, and I, I want to retract a little bit because I said, you know, most roles are written are like the the depressed or like the inspirational but we do go through that i mean that is, that is real life and but i don't think his story was meant to be like super inspirational or you know he wasn't a depressed guy he he just he wanted to live his life as a normal person yeah. he wanted to get back to what he loved doing which was flying planes and that's what a lot of us in the in the community after we're injured we just want to get back to that normal life like we 
are normal to whatever that was to us. And, yeah. and I can relate to that. He wasn't preaching, you know, he, he's just like, you know, I used to be able to do this. And now you're telling me I can't like, that's all I want to do is be able to do this again. Yeah. So I think that they really nailed it. And, and while I was on set, you know, I had conversations with the writer and the director and they, they were really on the same page. So, and then just, you know, to be part of that amazing show, like it, it's an NBC, it, it was definitely a gift. Definitely. Did you feel like you were able to have, I mean, I know I've worked in network TV before and I know it's a, it's sometimes a, a complicated machine, but did you, did you feel like you were able to have creative input on elements of the character himself beyond performing the role? Like when you were talking to the writer or director, did you have input into how he was approaching his circumstance? Yes. I, I, uh, I was actually surprised at how, first of all, I like when I was on set, I felt super comfortable. They made me feel welcomed and, you know, as part of a part of the team. So when I had my ideas, I wasn't afraid to kind of, you know, throw them out there. And because none of the, because the writer and the director, nobody on set was disabled. Like they, they want to hear your input. They, they generally want to make it authentic. And whenever I had something to say, they were like, oh, I didn't think of that, you know? So thank you. And, and they were like really receptive to the things that I was, I was saying which is awesome because it wasn't like, this is my show. This is how it's going to be done. Yeah. You know, and, and they really catered to like what I thought the character needed or, you know, what, uh, what I needed as, a, you know, as myself, as an actor. And then me, like, while I was on set, you know, I'm not a veteran. Mateo's a veteran. And, and, uh, I was asking the set if they, if there's any, anybody on set that was a veteran mm -hmm. and, uh, one of my, one of the PAs, I forget his name. He, he was a veteran, so I had a, oh, wow. you know, I had a side conversation with him. Wow. And uh, and he was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like he, it's like you're, because you know, you know what it is to be on set. Sometimes, yeah. you know, the principals don't talk to anyone, and and like I like to. The PAs, the PAs like, don't get enough. The PAs don't get enough love. Shout out right. to all the PAs in Hollywood. Yes, <laughs> I PA'd before, and I remember. I used to walk Tay Diggs' dog back in the day. <laughs> We, we can you can edit that out if you, if you want but uh yeah like i was talking to this pa and he was like he was just like oh my god um yes you know my this is my experience you know at being a veteran and i was like what how would you feel if this happened to you because i wanted to get a little more you know a little sense of uh, of what it would be like for a, a veteran and i and i i feel like that it, you know people on both sides of the the coin if you will should be open to things like that like just because I'm disabled doesn't mean I know everything about being disabled or, or having a disability. You know, there, there are other facets to the, to the person that, that you could always learn. Yeah. What are you, what are you uh, excited to see in your career next? Do you have any particular, like what sort of representation would you love to see that you're not seeing? I, a dream character like see, or a dream circumstance? I really would like to see a, a leading character who's disabled, like someone, and I know they have them. Uh, Netflix is doing a, a great job. Um, but for me, like there's a lot of uh, cerebral palsy. There's a lot of autism being represented, uh, but there's, I don't, I rarely see spinal cord injury. Mm. That's my injury. That's what I relate to. That's what I know. And we have our own set of unique challenges and I, everybody with a spinal cord injury knows that they're tough and they're different and they're, they're crappy in, in, in uh, there's a pun intent there. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry to be so forward, but those are things that the, the general public don't know about. So I, I actually am uh, in the process of pitching my own series where, you know, my character's the lead. Hopefully I'd get to play that. And uh, it revolves, you know, it's loosely based on my life, but it revolves around spinal cord injury and how it affects his friends and his family and himself and his journey, you know, post injury. So we're hoping that we can get that off the ground because at the end of the day, yes, I, you know, I want to be, I want to lead the show. I want to, you know, be able to tell my story, but I also want to educate because education, like we were talking about earlier, people 
in general public, they see somebody who's disabled and they, they don't know how to act. Yeah. Like that's something that I really struggled with after when I first started venturing out into the world as a wheelchair user that I was like often ignored and like overlooked. And like, it really, like, it just, it really hurt yeah. because I went from, I went from being like this bartender in nightlife, working for like these Hollywood clubs and like always in the scene and feeling seen, if you will, even though it was fake to, <laughs> to like just nothing. And like people just like, uh, you know, either being overly like, are you okay? Can I do anything? Or just nothing at all. Like I'm not a person. Yeah. yeah. So that really affected me. So, uh, you know, the part, the education part for me, showing people that, uh, you know, my character struggles the same way you struggle. You know, we, we love the same way you love. We, we party the same way you party. We, we have these problems and we have these wins that, that everybody experiences, but educate you in like how it, it really affects us, the, the actual injury affects us on day to day life and how it affects the people around us. So that's how, at the end of the day, I want to educate. Does it make you reflect on how you may have felt about disability yourself before you had a disability? Like, oh my God. did you know, did you know disabled folks in your life before you became one of us <laughs> or no? Did you have particular thoughts about us as a demographic or assumptions? I'm not gonna lie. I, I was one of those people that I was just completely ignorant to the fact, like I, I've, I've said this in a few interviews before, but I just, I didn't know anything about disabilities. I didn't know there was a disability community. Um, I didn't know how to act around people with disabilities. Uh, I remember actually when I bartended, there, there was a guy that would come in, in a wheelchair and, and, and everybody would be like, oh my God, they go out in wheelchairs, you know, like, <laughs> That's just, yeah. that's because we're not educated. And, and like, I would, you know, because I, I mean, I was always like service oriented. So as soon as he came in, I'd be like, Hey man, whatever you need, just let me know. Um, hoping that that would, you know, help him out in a way, but I, I, I didn't know. I, I really was ignorant to everything. And after I was disabled, okay. I, and I'm going to be honest. Like I was one of those people, I didn't park in, in uh, accessible spots, but I was one of those people who like would be running late to work and had to drop off my red box movie. And I know like the whole community is going to hate me for this, but <laughs> <laughs> I would be like, there's the accessible spot. I'm going to be 20 seconds. And I'd park, I'd run in, return my red box and I'd run out and like, okay, no harm, no foul. Right. But now, now that I, I am disabled and I'm looking for those spots and I see that it like yeah. infuriates me. Yeah. So, but it's all about education. Like I didn't know. People don't know. Some people are just buttholes, you know. Or sorry, I don't know if that's a curse word here. But <laughs> some people are that. just people. <laughs> some people are just some people are just plain out rude and don't care. Other people just don't understand that those thirty seconds to someone with a spinal cord injury, somebody with some type of uh, invisible disability that we don't talk a lot about, that maybe needs to get to the bathroom like quickly. Like yeah. those 30 seconds are like a lifetime, you know, and, and, yeah. and they, you know, it, it might take, it might take 30 seconds just to get the wheelchair lift up and down, you know? Right. That's right. Valuable and, and time. That's exactly. So, you know, I, I'm actually, I'm not happy that I did that, but I, I'm happy that I was able to learn why that was wrong. And I, I want to be able to be transparent and, and tell people that because, you know, some people are just like, oh I, yeah, I never do that. I'm sure yeah. you've done it just to run in real quick, you know, yeah. and now you know that that time is precious for us. And that parking spot is precious to people with disabilities. So don't abuse it. But, uh, yeah, I don't even know what we're talking about. <laughs> well, that, you know, that, yeah. that process of introspection is really powerful. And I think that's something that film and television have the capacity to do or any, any storytelling medium, because we can't expect that everybody is disabled like us. We we can't we can't hope that everyone uh, learns through firsthand experience. So the best we can do is hope that everyone at least learns from the content right. that they're consuming right. and and the relationships that they're building. Um, so the work you're doing is incredibly important, and and I know it's hard, and but also really fulfilling. Um, and congratulations to you on being recognized. And did you have a sense of what um, what 
the next step would be after this scholarship? Would this scholarship help you get your your personal project off the ground, or maybe put together like a a, a, a reel or of some sort around the project? Do you have any plans for that? Yeah, that's actually uh, something I thought about because we, we we've already shot one uh, proof of concept. We we shot like a a scene from the pilot uh, that was you know all self funded by my my writing partner Gina Christ. And I uh, kind of told her what, what was going on. So if we can use the money to maybe shoot another scene or shoot like a mini pilot, I don't know. We, we're going to, we're going to see how that can help us. So, but it's definitely, you know, I'm definitely going to try and use that to get the project off the ground. And if not, yeah. you know, maybe invest in like a camera to do myself tape. So I'm not using my phone anymore and you know, yeah. <laughs> It's well, definitely the, gonna it, help, though. I mean, it's I, always it's always Sunny Crew. They got like twelve seasons from something that they filmed on their own. I think in the early days. That's a bad show. I need to reach out. To <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh so. man, that that is awesome. Oh so, yeah. Uh, but big congratulations to you. I I wish we could mingle in person at the Media Access Awards, but uh, we're all staying safe. And make sure that you stay safe as well. And thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us today. Uh, thank you so much for having me. It's been a blessing. Really appreciate it, David. Thanks. Talk to you later. All right. Bye.